What is up guys? Welcome back to another Twin Motion video. And in this video we're going to look at changing between and the differences of and you know really what is the difference between working with local and like the world axis. This is new as of Twin Motion 2022 and so you know it's basically how we place objects and how we move them around and things like that. So it's it's kind of simple but um, it will show you how to better work with objects, especially objects that don't apply to just a simple flat surface. So if at any point in this video, that if you happen to learn something or just like the video, please, please, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. I appreciate it. I really do. Okay, getting into it now. I'm going to work with some of these new uh, just gym models that are in Twin Motion. Really nice looking stuff. And we want to maybe just place them around on different surfaces. And I have a, a flat surface here, of course. And then I've got this dandy looking angled surface, which we're probably not going to end up normally placing any of these objects on some sort of weird angle surface but I want to give you this as an example uh, of how you might place objects whether it is th these gym objects or any object at a twin motion how you would get that to be placed where you want it to be placed but not only that how do you move it around on the surface that you want to move it around on and that'll start to make a little more sense as we get into things a little more so I'm gonna go ahead and place this pull-up system just on the ground here and clearly this type of thing doesn't belong on the ground because it's a pull-up, you know, like this is, this should be angled a different way and things like that. So let's go ahead and turn this, of course, this way. And with that, like, obviously this, this is how it should be, you know, like it, on a wall like that. Okay, well, if I move this over to the angle there, it, it will actually angle really nicely for us, which is, I, I like that a lot. That's kind of the point here. Now, I'm going to delete this and place this back because it'll do that by default. You can see that it will snap to these faces, which is awesome. I love that. So, again, typically you're not going to have this type of a setup on an angled wall. Who knows? Maybe you have a really weird gym that does that, or maybe it's on a, a wall that's you know angled the other direction. Maybe that would make more sense, but I don't know why. But regardless, that's cool. And if I do this with, let's say, just this utility bench, placing this on the ground, Obviously, we know what we're getting here. This makes sense. But we can see, you know, it's actually responsive to the surface that we're looking at. And that's really cool. You know, that's not necessarily useful for this bench because we'd never put this on a wall. It's literally pointless. Um, but let's actually go ahead and place this bench on this angled surface just to show you some things here. So whenever I place this here, it's, it's nice and flush. It looks really good. You know, <laughs> really good as in it actually is flush with this angled face. But this is where things get a little bit fishy. And as of 2022, we didn't have this as an option. So let's go ahead and see here. If I wanted to just move this around, what would happen? Well, if I move this up, uh, I'm gonna, it's, it's going to fall away and move away from this angled surface. And I don't want that at all because, of course, anything floating is incorrect. I have to have this on the surface, even as dumb as it is to have this utility bench on that actual surface. Now, how do I get it back? Well, I can take this center portion and just move it. But then I've literally lost that, let's say, a specific value that I wanted to move it up. If I wanted to move it up a foot, well, I'm now off of that actual angled face that I wanted to stay on. That's the point here. I don't want to lose that as an option. So how do we go about doing this? And likewise, if I wanted to just move this you know, I'm moving it off the face, which I don't want to do. So let's go ahead and put it back on the face. And this is where working with a local axis as opposed to the world axis comes into play. So first of all, what is the world axis? Well, we're all familiar with uh, any sort of coordinate system. It's, you know, X, Y, and then Z, vertical. Z is straight up, that third dimension. And so what we're seeing here in this arrow is indicating the Z axis. And we know that because it's straight up off of my ground level, which is basically my X and Y. And so we also know we're in world, you know, working with the world coordinate system if this arrow and is in the actual Z and the others are in actual X, Y. If I toggle here to my movement, I can see, well, yeah, I get my actual X, Y here along the actual world X, Y, and then my Z on my Z. Okay, all this makes sense now. No, no, no. If we want to move this, and this is all based on wanting to move this object along an angled surface, you know, there's plenty of reasons why we might want to do that, but I'm showing you with this bench as an example. So from here, we looked at the world axis. We know what this is. We can move it up. I'm now off of that surface. And likewise, if I move it down, I'm moving this into and 
clearly that doesn't work. It's not right. So undoing that, we can see that that's what we're getting from working with the world axis. Now, the local axis is completely different in that it is responsive to the object that you're working with, basically local, like localized, as in specific, as in specific to that object, as opposed to the whole world or everything else or the entire normal coordinate system that you're used to working with. So how do we change that? Well, actually, in this pullout menu, we have a an actual arrow, we can expand that and see, yeah, we're, we're used to seeing these toggles between move, rotate, and scale. But besides that, we have a toggle a local versus world axis, and then the pivot edit. We'll get to that in a second. So if I toggle this from the world, which is straight up, again, the Z we're used to seeing straight up, and we change that to local, now you can see what happened to my, I, I like to call it the gizmo. What happened to my gizmo? It actually angled and it's now angled basically parallel to that actual angled surface and that would that would change if this actual object changed as well so if i rotate this for some reason of course i need to put this back on it but you can see it rotates to it i'm going to undo that but we can see now with the difference between the local versus the world and that if i come over here we can see that that is responding to the angle that Basically, it's hosted to, with the object's hosted to, which is really cool. And that's good. So what does this allow me to do? Well, it allows me to move this, you know, a foot exactly in the direction that I want to go in based on the actual angle. And I'm not going in the object. I'm not going above it. I'm not, I'm basically staying flush to it, which is perfectly natural and normal. And this is awesome. This is really great because it allows me to, you know, have that flexibility and so i don't have to always push it back to the object itself and i can even move it all along this face which is fantastic all of these things are working really well for us okay so here we go the pivot edit well if i look at here i can see reset pivot and then i can center the pivot well if i center this it's really not going to do anything because it, it just so happens that this object is uh, the location is already centered now the center itself is basically allowing me to move this. If I, you can see, I actually have this a new looking uh, gizmo, if you want to call it. And so this is going to allow me to move this to somewhere else. Now I can recenter it and reset it if I want to in a second. But let's say I, for some reason, want to pivot this bench along this leg. Maybe this leg location is really important. So I can, I can take this and I can move this. This is becomes independent of the object, but I can move it to, you know, about there, centered-ish on the object and then on that leg specifically so because that leg is now important. Now, if I untoggle this, now that is my new location for editing. So maybe I wanted to rotate about there so you could see exactly what we're with. So I'm going to put this on the ground now because it, it's a little silly to work with this on an angle to show you this part. So putting this here, we can see that by default, this object, you know, pivot or gizmo is there on the center. It's like center on the exact op center of the object on the ground. Makes sense. That's a good location to have it by default. But if I wanted to edit that, the pivot location, I can do this and I can say, well, yeah, like I said before, I want it to be more biased to this leg, you know, pretty much centered on that leg right there. It looks good. And so now when I untoggle this, I have the exact same things that I can work with. I can change it to local versus world, but then now it's orbiting, it's now moving, it's now scaling everything off of that new pivot location, which is great. So it gives you the flexibility to do that. And I wouldn't do this with most objects, but there are some specific objects that you decide, ooh, I need to get to this point, and then I need to rotate it about that point, or whatever it might be. So um, here I can show you again the difference between world and local axis. So right now we can see that you know, we're working with the world and that it's straight up. And then if I change this to local, nothing happened. Well, nothing happened because it is actually on the XY plane and then Z is straight up. So basically it's not on a non, you know, flat surface, not on a ground level kind of thing or a ground surface. And so that's why this does nothing when I change it from one to the other. Now, if I keep it on local and then I decide to move this object over to the angle, now you can see it's responding to that angle nicely, perfectly. And of course, if I put it back to, to world, there it goes, it's going to respond that way. So another cool thing is that depending on what it is, and let's just get ridiculous with the treadmill here. So I've got a treadmill. 
And if I want to put this treadmill on this angled surface, again, you'd probably never see this, but if I wanted to get really weird with it, um, and I want to have the flexibility of just working with and seeing what that actual local axis would look like, I can come in here and we can see that, you know, my axis is currently with the world and I can see that the Z is straight up there on my pivot point, but I can actually change it to local versus world, toggle it here while the object is selected. So I can change it right there and suddenly I can see how this object not only is oriented to this angle, but the pivot and how that's oriented and it's, it looks really good. So I put that there. I probably don't want it like that. I at least want to rotate it 90 degrees if it's going to be on an odd angle and I can put it right there and it's going to fit really nicely. Clearly, this is straight up absurd and would never exist. Although I'd love to see it. <laughs> Maybe this is something that's happening in space or on a treadmill in space. I don't know. So cool. We're getting that idea. And so let's say we, again, we come down and we want to place another one of these benches and we decide, yeah, we want to move that pivot point again. So I can move it here, pivot at it, and I can move, I can move it anywhere. I can move it way out here. So it now becomes that this point is what moves this object. Again, kind of absurd, but maybe there's a point elsewhere that impacts what this object is and where it should be or rotates it or something like that. So you can start to see how this could be useful. But let's say I get to this point and realize, well, that's not only stupid, but it's incorrect. I can come over here to the drop down and I can reset the pivot and it will just reset it back to the default location, which is wonderful. That's exactly what I want to see. So we have looked at everything regarding the local versus world axis, how we can move objects on angled faces. And this would apply really well to like decals, for example. That's a really good one. I don't tend to use a lot of them, but as, as this uh, tool has come out, I definitely like using more decals. And so like, let's say I take this shell. Um, obviously this shell works anywhere. And so I can put this here and it looks nice. It's a nice looking shell, good enough. But the second I click on it, and I want to move this up. If I'm in the world, it's off of the object. It's floating. I can't see it anymore, which is just too bad. That's not good. Now, of course, I want to undo that. I want to make sure I see it. But the joyous part about having a local axis is that I can change it here. And then I can suddenly just move this object everywhere that I want on this face. And it's just, it works so nicely. You know, this is exactly what I want to see out of something that's a decal. I want to actually move it around on that specific face, which is awesome. Okay, so... Again, we've looked at everything world versus local axis, and I think that will do it for this video. If you did happen to learn something, please, please, please demolish that like button. It helps me out a lot. I really appreciate it. But really, again, that is it. I will see you in the next Twin Motion video. Have a wonderful day, and thank you very much for watching.